We're here in the Eastwood Garage doing another live tech session for you guys. Uh, for anybody that hasn't watched one of these before, we like to make it pretty interactive for you guys. So we want you guys to join in on the chat, ask us tech questions. Uh, we have our lead tech here as always, Scotty C. Yep, so I'll be on Facebook, I'll be on YouTube, so that way you guys can ask your questions. We can answer them live right here for you. So let's talk about this blaster here, Matt. So something that we've been asked about quite a bit, um, and something that we always uh, are dealing with here at Eastwood is a lot of our products, we take something that's maybe really expensive or something that's done on the industrial uh, level and is something that's too big or expensive for uh, an average enthusiast at home to do. Um, and then we try and uh, engineer it so that it's something you can use at home that's really easy to use, user friendly, and also is, is very uh, affordable. So something that comes up all the time, we go to car shows and things like that, people are asking about dustless blasting. Uh, it's a big new, uh, not new, but it's something that's become more popular in recent years uh, for people to have done when you're getting something media blasted. Uh, so what we did is we worked to come up with a dustless blasting system that is very simple and works without an air compressor. So I'm going to pick up the whole kit here. This is basically the whole kit right here is this just the hose and these two pieces uh, metal pieces on the end here. So the business end of it if you will is right here and I'm going to hold this hose for Joe to, to get in. Uh, so what this is, this is a special nozzle that we made. Uh, when you have your pressure washer uh, you want to make sure that you have a nozzle that has an end on it with a quick disconnect, just like an air compressor would have, a 3 8 fitting, um, that you can fit on there. If it doesn't have one, you can add it to most of them. Uh, you put that on there, and that's going to, of course, run your water directly through there. What it has on the other side here, it has a, a, a tubing coming out of the bottom, and where, what that does, it goes to this, this hose here that I will extend out, and we have, like, our small blast kit, that we offer, our small job blast kit. Uh, we have this, this short hose here, uh, or, or tube rather, that goes into your media. So right here we have our ground glass. Uh, with this you want to use about 30 grit or finer. Uh, and you put this right into the ground glass like so. You don't want to go much further than 12 inches uh, deep. So when you're putting this in here, go about 12 inches or less and you put that in there and you just let it sit as you're blasting. And that's basically it to get it set up. Uh, and you can just continue to feel, fill that. We obviously offer the ground glass. Uh, if, you're, if you're not getting it uh, from us, which you definitely should be, uh, you want to make sure it's 30 grit or, uh, or finer. So the other end here, this pulls the media up through here. And then it's going to go right up into this nozzle on the end here. And it comes up with there. Everything mixes together with your water, and the pressure is created by the, uh, the media blaster. And that's how you, uh, you get that set. So let me take this apart here, and I'll show you guys the, the internal components. So the end, the end uh, threads off here. And just like you would see with most of your blasters, there is a consumable nozzle on the end here. So this does wear. This will get a little oblonged over time and uh, it, will, it will start to wear. And then there is also an o-ring right here. This o-ring is very important. That's going to seal against there to keep uh, the water from your pressure, pressure washer from getting mixed with your media and coming back in. So make sure that you have that o-ring. It comes with each of these when you buy a new uh, when you buy the consumables, it comes with a new O-ring each time. So that's all there is as far as consumables. Um, otherwise, you just thread this together and fit it on. So what we did to show you guys, because it's difficult to show it here live, they don't really like when we're shooting media or water all the way over. Uh, we have some really nice shots of the, uh, this radiator support we did here. So you can see uh, the nice part about this that you'll see versus when you're blasting normally is there's going to be dust everywhere. You wouldn't, if we were, when we film blasting, we have a lot of difficulty with getting uh, even a shot to show you how it's stripping paint off. Uh, because of it mixing with the water, there is absolutely no dust. Now afterwards, what you do, because there is water being used to make sure that there's no surface rust, you spray it with our after blast immediately after you're done and you dry it off. And it's going to, number one, it's going to take any of the residual surface rust that may have gotten on the part just from when you blasted it and it sat. Uh, number two, it's going to seal it up. 
So it, now you can see after we sprayed it, it has this kind of medium gray tone to it. That's after the after blast has dried and it's giving a, it gives it a phosphoric coating on it so that it's not going to rust in the future. So we can let this part sit, continue to work on our project, and when we're ready, we can prep the part and prime and paint it as you would normally. But uh, this worked really, really quick. Uh, you didn't need as much um, setup time because there isn't all the dust and the um, and the, the media isn't scattering as far because it's mixing with the water. So it was really nice. It all kind of is contained in the area in which you're you're uh, using your pressure washer. So if you're in a in a, a neighborhood or something like that, uh, you're not going to be blowing media all over you know your neighbor's yard or at their car or something like that. Uh, Scott, do we have any questions at all? Sure. So I mean, something to note out. I'm not sure if you covered was the. Did you cover the gallon per minute on this one? Um, I uh, don't know if I did. If I did okay. not, sure. So uh, if he didn't, one of the things to keep in mind, he definitely got the connection. It's kind of an industry standard on most of your gasoline-powered uh, pressure washers. With your electrics, a lot of them are a little bit lower. So uh, one of the specs you want to make sure is that you have a uh, pressure washer that can do at least 3.5 gallons per minute. What that's going to do is it's going to create the correct amount of flow rate to pick that media up and be able to run properly. Uh, the other question we also had too from Robert was with this, would you have any problem removing body filler? Uh, body filler is going to be a tough one, um, even with normal media blasting. If you have one of the higher pressure um, blasters, it goes up to 10. That's the other thing that we should mention. If you guys have a really killer uh, pressure washer, 10 gallons per minute is the maximum. Um, but if you have one that's that's on the higher scale, you definitely could take some body filler off. But if you have a project that's unfortunate enough to have an inch of body filler, I don't know if it's going to necessarily take that off. But if you have a light skim coat or something like that on it, it, it should take it off if you have a good, uh, a good setup that's running correctly. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and like Scott mentioned, you're going to want to have a good, uh, a good pressure washer. Um, a gasoline powered one is best. But if you have an electric one, just make, it, make sure it's a heavier duty one that will be up to the task. And this is the after blast here. We have it available in the gallons. Um, you can put in a squirt bottle. You saw we were just using a little uh, squirt bottle that we dumped it in and sprayed this over this. And that is definitely way to, the, the way to coat it. Um, so if for anybody that's just joining us, I definitely want to get the, the footage again, if we can throw it up, uh, of when we were doing this particular part on how it started out. That's the setup. We had just a cheap gasoline uh, pressure washer, and you can see that there is absolutely no dust coming out of there. You can really see what's going on. It's easy to blast. As a user, you can really see what you're, what you're uh, blasting off, and you're not getting it all over the place. And then finally, at the end, after I had it blast, blasted, I sprayed it with the, uh, with the after blast, and you actually can see the rust or the residual uh, rust or, or media that's on there is coming right off of the part. And we are left with this really nice part uh, that is coated, it's etched, it's not going to rust. And uh, this is actually off of Ryan's truck. So uh, Ryan has a big old Ford pickup truck that we're going to be doing some work on in future videos. And he wanted to get some parts stripped down so he can paint and uh, he can prep and paint them. So this thing's going to be great to sit just as is. It's not going to rust. And uh, when he's ready for it, we can, uh, we can prime and paint this no problem. So this is uh, how he's going to do probably a lot of the parts on that. Any other questions we have, Scott? Sure. So the other one was, and I definitely can't answer this one, they want to know about how much media you consumed uh, to do that, that Oh, panel. okay. Yeah, I think we did about a bag, uh, the 50-pound bag that we offer. Uh, it was about that bag uh, full is what we used to do this, uh, maybe a little bit less than that, but it was right around there. Uh, a little bit of that media was just in us setting the, setting the tool up and everything like that, getting the pressure washer started and everything. You know, you, you use a little bit when you're setting it up, but it was about a bag was used during this. Um, this thing did have some heavy, multiple, multiple coats of paint on this. This has been sprayed a bunch of times, and I think I went through a black, a white, I think there was a blue under there, and then there also was like a galvanized coating that was on some of these pieces. You actually see just a little bit of residual, like a galvanized coating. So uh, taking some of that off on some of those places took a little bit longer as well. But yeah, that's about what it did. This is a pretty large piece though. I mean, this is probably the, almost the size of a quarter panel on some cars. So good question. Any, any other ones we got? No, we're good now. 
Cool. So that's all I got, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, as always. Uh, make sure you hit the link on, on the, in the comments there. We have the product page there where you can actually view the product, see all the specs for anybody that might have missed them. We also have the instructions in there. You can read the instructions, see how quick and easy it is to set up. I mean, of course, we showed you the video, but uh, there's really nothing to this. You clip it on the end of your power washer, put it in there, start it up, and you're off and running. So uh, thanks, guys. I'll catch you later.